Hi everyone, Knoopsy here, and the Google Pixel 2 XL is one of the best Android phones I've used in the last little while. There is a bit of controversy regarding this phone, but in all honesty, it's just an amazing overall device, and in this video, I'm going to tell you why. First up, I like the design. It doesn't really stand out compared to other phones like the iPhone X or other Android phones from Samsung for example, but let's be honest, it still looks pretty good, although a bit safe, yes. But the Pixel's really all about very subtly awesome design traits, like this black color feels grippy, and the phone just feels very solid. There's really great feeling buttons are in the perfect place, and the perfect fingerprint scanner placement as well, and it's also very fast. You're not getting wireless charging or a headphone jack, but what you do have is water resistant, which wasn't on the previous Pixel phone. And yes, the bezels really aren't the thinnest I've ever seen, but what you do actually have here is a front-facing stereo speaker setup. It's kind of a treat to have this on really any phone, and they do sound pretty good, but not really as great as the iPhone 8 Plus's dual speaker system. Now I want to do something a bit different here and just skip directly to the cameras because they're just so important. These cameras are great, but there's also a lot of really cool intelligence behind them. The front 8 megapixel camera takes some really awesome selfies, especially with HDR on, and with the software portrait mode on, they're even better. Even in dark conditions you can pull off some pretty nice looking portrait selfies with a nice blurred background, and they look pretty great overall, like you just held up your DSLR in selfie style and took a shot. It looks pretty great. And the rear 12 megapixel camera is one of the most impressive I've ever used. Now, I'll be totally honest, I've left HDR Plus enhanced on since I first got the phone, and that's because it really just makes photos incredible. Here's an example of how HDR sort of really enhances photos. This is with HDR off completely, nothing on at all, and you can see the background, the highlights are just blown out completely, it doesn't look that great, and the shot really isn't terrible, but it could be better. And this is with HDR Plus enhanced on. You can really see a lot more details and there's more range between the foreground and the background. The background isn't totally blown out with highlights, it's actually visible. Basically, HDR Plus on the Pixel brings out the full potential in highlights, shadows, and colors. Now taking a photo with HDR Plus enhanced on takes a few seconds longer than taking it with just enhanced on or with no HDR on, but Google actually has a second processor just for the camera built into this phone that's going to be activated in a future software update. So this camera is going to just get even better. Whether it be in bright light or indoors or outdoors in low light, this camera is very impressive. Portrait mode here, even with a single camera, is really awesome. It works great for people, but does have some difficulty with glasses, hats, and hair sometimes, but in general, the results are amazing. It works great in pretty much all conditions, and even with objects as well, and the results are pretty much up to par with the iPhone 8 Plus and the Samsung Galaxy Note 8. Even in dark situations indoors, you can still get some good, usable results, because it's not relying on a second camera to take these shots, it's pretty much all software based afterwards. Now 4K video does look pretty good, but I think it could look a bit better in terms of details and contrast, but the dual stabilization works excellent even when running, like I'm doing in this shot. Microphone audio is pretty terrible though. It sounds like I'm in a fish tank or something. It, it's not great. It's not like you're you need to talk about the display. <sighs> okay, Carl. The display is the weakest and most controversial part of this phone. It's a thing that people are actually saying is the deal breaker for buying this device or not buying this device. So let's touch on each one of the major points presented that people have mentioned and that I've personally experienced regarding the display. So in my opinion, the display during daily usage looks fine. Honestly. I think the sharpness is pretty much up to par, the contrast is, is fairly nice, and it's generally accurate at least to my eyes for most content. 
If you gave this phone to someone who doesn't really care about all of the very specific display traits, they'd say it looks pretty normal, except a bit less colorful. So let's start there. The first thing that I noticed and still kind of bothers me today is that the colors aren't that vibrant. It's something I notice pretty much every day and I wish they were a bit more colorful and a bit more lively. They look really kind of muted. But it's the one display problem that you can easily fix in a software update for sure and I hope Google actually does that because it would make the display much better. Second, the blue tint. When I first got this phone, I did notice the blue tint on various sort of angles, looking up and down, left and right, and after thoroughly using the phone for a few weeks, I've started to really forget that even exists. It's only when your display is on really high brightness and you're really tilting the phone vigorously left and right and up and down, that's when you notice it. But head on, you don't see that blue tint really at all. Third is graininess. It's present on white screens in low lit rooms and on low brightness on this phone. It kind of looks like those envelopes or pieces of paper with very fine grain on it. It's, it's noticeable, but it's not something that's going to really piss you off when you use this phone. It's something you're going to just forget about after a few days. And number four is burn-in. Personally, I haven't experienced it on my unit. I've checked multiple times and nothing. Google's apparently readying a fix for this in a future software update, but if your phone already does have some form of burn-in, take it to Google, take it to your carrier, and just get it fixed as soon as possible. Okay, Carl, are you happy now? So wait, the display isn't the best. Does that mean the phone sucks? Okay, so here are my final thoughts on the display. I want to end this discussion on my channel once and for all. So the display is definitely weak compared to their Samsung phones and other iPhone models in some aspects, for sure. Now, is it really a deal breaker for me personally? Probably not. If they fixed the colors, made them a bit more vibrant, a bit more saturated, I'd be fine. That would fix my woes with this display. But I do get it, this phone is expensive and the display really isn't perfect. But if you can get past the issues I mentioned, you don't experience burn-in, and if the colors get fixed in the future, the display really isn't as terrible as people are making it seem. Is that good enough for you? Yes. Okay, thank you. So now we're gonna be moving on to the specifications, performance, and software bundle, I guess you could say. So you have the usual top of the line Snapdragon 835, four gigs of RAM, although I wish it was six, that would be kind of nice on this phone for future proofing. But besides that, the experience is unmatched. Everything is buttery, things open fast, animations are crazy quick, and this phone will basically spoil you as an Android phone. Now, even though this phone has the same specifications as pretty much every other flagship Android phone, I don't know, it just feels on a whole other level. Just, it's crazy smooth. It's also because of the sheer purity of the software. It's not really stock Android, it's the Pixel launcher with a few additions, and that's the ideal Android for me. Everything is clean, consistent, well-designed, and it's all about the small, thoughtful details you'll notice during daily usage. And I've never really used a virtual assistant more than I've used the Google Assistant, both accidentally and on purpose. Basically, you just squeeze the phone now and it activates Google Assistant, and it's sometimes accidentally activated, but usually it responds when I actually need it to. So it's good for turning on my lights, which are smart lights, asking at the weather, asking at the news. It's very useful and it's good to be right there, basically at your fingertips. And one more software thing, I promise, I just absolutely love this software. The now playing auto recognize feature for songs like an always on Shazam is very, very cool. It works good in most situations, even if the music source is very far away, you can usually pick it up and it shows on the screen. It doesn't work well for more new titles, some more niche titles, I guess, but it works well for very common songs and older songs. It's just very cool. One of those things that only Google could do. And powering this phone daily is a 3520 milliamp hour battery, and it's very impressive. I can use this phone pretty much all day for my regular daily usage, which is pretty heavy usually. And by the end of the day when I'm ready to go to sleep, there's around 40 or 50% remaining, so it's pretty good. Okay, so in summary, the Google Pixel 2 XL is a seriously good Android phone. Now the weakest part, as we all know, is the display. Now, if they fix the colors, it's gonna be a much better overall display, but still, that might be a deal breaker for some people. But for me personally, it doesn't really bother me too much. I think the display is just one small part of this phone, while the rest of the phone as a package is great. The camera's great, the performance is great, the software is beautiful, the design is solid, and in general, this phone is good if you can afford its pretty expensive price. And this video is a bit of a special one too because I'm giving my first rating for a phone. This gets 8 out of 10 avocados. It's a pretty good overall phone, I'm going to keep using it probably daily. I love this device, it's great. Thank you! 
for watching.